Hi boys and girls and welcome back to the channel. Um, I'll show you what we're up to this week so far. Uh, this is a Vauxhall VXR, which I've bored it, honed it, I've refaced the block, and at the moment I'm gapping the piston rings on that for a customer. And also, there's not really a lot to show on that to be honest, because, well it's done. Um, but that's one job. We've also had a BMW six cylinder diesel heading for a recondition. So I've done that. We've got the old storm going on. Oh, shit. Got the old storm going on out here. Let's just wipe the side of Sam's micro out. Um, oh, it's windy out there. Uh, we've done this head for a local garage. This is an Eco Ford Eco Boost cylinder head which I've vac tested, uh, washed and give it a reface. There's another low cost engine coming for a top and tail rebuild. There's a draw attack there which is coming for the same 2 litre draw attack. And then the first job that I'm going to do is these injectors. These are Jaguar um, V12 injectors which I do quite a lot of. Um, for the customer. Um, the customer however was desperate for these and I, I needed them for a week really um, if not a bit more uh, because these, these they're quite hard work to do so he sent them to somewhere else and um, stuck them in a car and uh, well the car didn't run so he's ended up putting a set that I'd done for him for another car in it and it's fine so he's gave these injectors to me I've got a now have a look what's been done to them to find out why they're sticking but these are for uh, another YouTube channel I think it's called Harry's Garage or something like that so um, we'll get these sorted for him hopefully fix them see exactly what was wrong with them um, I, don't, I don't know who had them before and uh, in all fairness I wouldn't say if I did know but I didn't know who had them before but I don't know what they've done they've, look, they've made a neat job of them but for some reason they're just not working um, but there we are, we'll get them working. Long story short, the car didn't run, uh, had big misfires, lots of problems. Well, when I do the V12 injectors, I run them up at um, uh, six at a time. And so there's the first six that I've ran, and there's the results there. And we've got one injector's not working. This injector here wasn't working, but I gave the body a tap and it started to work. Um, the filters were second hand, they was filled with rust still behind the filter so that's really not that good. And this injector here, so this one here, um, as it's running sometimes it keeps jamming open. So I don't know if these are going to be repairable but I'm, I'm going to give them a go. I'm going to run them through the ultrasonic a few times, I'm going to take these ones out, run them through the ultrasonic and then test these and then see how many that we can save but there we go that's a not a very good job Mick the plasterer hopefully he's going to be here on Monday to plaster in the shop uh, I was going to have a crack at it myself like I did upstairs but I want it to uh, I want it to be a really good finish and uh, well it wasn't a really good finish when I did it we, we had to put a bit of easy filling it here and there but I had a crack at it so but um, yeah so Mick will be getting on with that and uh, hopefully then we can start loading the shop up and and uh, turning that into something oh what what else we did have this week um, we had um, Cirque Motorsport come in and we've opened up an account with them so we can do all the Lucas race oils and everything now as well as um, set trab oil coolers and, and all their product lines really uh, and also liquid molly as well we're going to be selling their oils and uh, brake cleaners and hand cleaners and every 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 bit of their products so hopefully the shop will be good because it's going to have all top brands in there we're going to try and keep it filled with good branded um, stuff and uh, yeah push some of that out so it's the storm Sam's started work late because there's uh, two trees fell down in Luggershaw where he's working today and then it's actually a good job that he did because 
he was in my unit, the new unit, and uh, he heard something. Climbed up these steps, and the roof's blowing off. So he's uh, he's reattaching the roof for me. So it's a bloody good job he didn't go to work really, because I'd have been screwed. I'd not go there. So today I've been working on the Focus RS and the Rover V8 and one of the jobs I've got to do on the Focus RS is the customer's bought some high lift cams so the, the valve is now touching the piston. So I've marked where it's touching this piston here, I've levelled them up on the mill and now what I'm going to do is set the valve angle onto the mill and then put valve cutouts in. And spin them around, this is the inlet side, and then spin them around and do the exhaust. So that's the standard Focus RS piston with no valve reliefs in it on the inlet side. And then that's the valve release machined into it. So three more to do, and then I've got to swap it over and put tiny little ones in the exhaust side, and that's done. So these are the Focus RS pistons that I've put valve cutouts in now uh, because of the cam that he's running. It's got quite a big cam or big cams. So just to be on the safe side, they normally miss. But sometimes when you strip them after they've ran for a period of time, you can just see slight indentations where it's got a little bit too close. So I thought I'd, it's better to be safe than sorry. So... Um, milled cutouts in them so what I'm going to do now is dummy build one cylinder so I'll dummy build this one cylinder with no rings in it drop the head on it and just make sure with plasticine that I've got the right clearance the other thing that I've had done is a friend of mine Brian who's got an um, engineering company he makes um, all the Vauxhall engine plates for us and different bits and bobs I sent this this is an MGA timing cover that I sent up to him and I wanted uh, a plate machining into it so we can unbolt it to get to the vernier timing wheel to adjust the ignition uh, the camshaft timing sorry um, so this is turned up today and he's made a cracking job of it so what I need to do now is just dry fit it make sure we've got clearance where we need clearance and all that kind of stuff but Thanks Brian, top work as usual. So another job that's happening today on the workshop is uh, the, I've got a really good bunch of guys out now clearing this rubbish. I paid someone else to come and do this and uh, they scraped it but they never come back and finished the job and what they did scrape they scraped and left here which um, wasn't ideal. But then um, the guys from Sundog which is a local firm, got in touch, uh, come and had a look at the job and uh, yeah, quoted me on that, so they're doing this today. So what they're doing is they're just, they're not clearing up all at the back of the unit, but they're clearing all the way down the side to, just to get all this crap, which is sat on the side of the building. So they're gonna clear all that away from the building and scrape it back up onto the bank and then they're getting rid of all this old uh, mess down here for me. And at the front of the building, I don't actually know what this thing is here, but I think he's got to move part of it to get in with his digger. But so far, it looks like they're doing a wicked job. I mean, the, the, the boss of the company was fantastic. He's uh, done exactly what he said he was going to do when he said he was going to do it so yeah can't um can't recommend sundog enough see what it looks like when it's uh all scraped away though this is the live saturday night we're building the shop watching nascar eating food salad obviously and we've even got a beer Yes, 
So we've got all the AMC V8 bits out of the acid. Um, I've taken them out of the acid three or four times now uh, and put them back in because they were so dirty. Um, well, I just couldn't get them how I wanted them, but they're back down to cast iron now. Then none of it's in real good order. So I'm gonna have to speak to my customer about that. So I'm gonna have a measure up of it all. But it's all back to cast. And rust basically. Um, the rods have cleaned up quite nice compared to what they were. The pistons I know are scrap, so I'm not too fussed about them. The valve train. Well, I've got to measure it, but it looks okay. I've just had a quick look through it. The crankshaft uh, is marked quite bad. That needs a regrind. So that's not great. It's quite deep in places. The valve springs have all tidied up quite nice. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to box. I'm going to box all that up. Um, get in touch with the customer and find out exactly what he wants me to do. I don't know whether he wants me to carry on doing machining, order some bits, or or what really. But anyway, uh, like I say in and out the acid a fair few times, and um, it's definitely got all the paint off it. It's got all the old oil and crud out of it. It's got it back down to cast iron and rust. So. <laughs> off decent so today's been a pretty good day um, a mate of mine from uh, my snap-on career has been up for me to test some injectors for him uh, so Simon at Amber Motor Company uh, it's been lovely seeing him today I haven't seen him for probably I don't know probably three or four months so he's been up he's bought me a, a mug and he's bought me an ice scraper and snow scraper so yeah, we've been out and had a coffee, so it's been a good day. So this is a Duratec crankshaft assembly that I'm balancing. First thing to do is the crankshaft. I balance, I balance every um, component individually. Uh, that case, if there's ever a problem with the clutch, the flywheel, the front pulley, all we need to balance is that end as we change it. If we was to balance it as a complete assembly and the clutch went, then the whole engine's got to be stripped to get the crank out and all that so we can balance it all together again. So balancing it all individually means we can replace components and only balance that one component. So on my crankshaft balancer, I've weighed the crank because the machine needs to know the weight of everything. And then the next thing to do is to set the, the planes. This is the, the left plane, which is the flywheel plane, and this is the front pulley, the right plane. It's got locking screws at the bottom, and then it's just got these ratchets to move them about. So this is the drive belt. You've got a, quite a few different styles of crankshaft balancer. Uh, this is a belt driven, so that what this does is this this drives the crank off the centre main in direction of rotation of the of the engine. You've got ones that you could put a chuck on here and it'll drive it from the front. However, every time I've seen one of them where the truck sometimes doesn't run through at the front, it knocks the crank slightly out of balance on the front nose. But depending on crank grinders and where you go, uh, sorry, crank balancers and where you go is uh the difference in machines basically but mine's driven by belt off the centre main so the first thing that I need to do is work out the centre of the of the crank on the machine so the webs don't touch the machine to do that the crank's fitted onto the balancer. I turn the speed right down and start the machine. And then just ever so slowly let the crank turn so it can find its happy place.
and then I put the details of the crankshaft into the crankshaft balancer computer. So the next thing to do when putting some crankshaft data in is it wants to know various points of the crankshaft. So what it wants to know is the distance from the, the left hand plane to the correction point, which is here, the right hand plane to the correction point, and then it wants to know the distance between the two correction points, and then it wants to know how far out the correction point is from the centre of the crankshaft. So I've put all them bits of data in to the computer. The next thing to do is these tolerance points here are set into the machine. So, But to get them in, we put in the weight of the crankshaft, which is 14 and a half kilos and then we put in a standard correction factor and then that sets the crankshaft data up here then hit OK and then that means now that it's all ready to go so what I'm going to do now is run the crankshaft up at the desired speed So what we need is 800 RPM up here, so at the minute it's 760. So as soon as it gets to 800 RPM, it will then start to read the balance data, which is just there. So when it lights up green like this, that means it's in balance. So I can hold the data and then take a print of the screen. And then this needs no work. This is a good crankshaft, it's, uh, it needs no work at all. A lot of the time these light up red and the targets are out, so we have to just drill to get them straight. You're going to see um, some BMW cranks get done, uh, which I've already filmed that before, but they're going to be put up after this video is made, and, and those BMW cranks both needed adjustment, so you'll see that in there. So what I've done is I've printed a copy of it to give to my customer, uh, the next thing to do is I have to change the settings on the machine because I'm going to bolt on the front pulley. I'm going to bolt on the front pulley and I'm going to bolt on the flywheel and then re rebalance those two items. So now I'm balancing the front pulley and that is absolutely spot on as well. I must admit these, uh, these Durotex are a good engine standard. Uh, and what I've done is, because this pulley is fully floating, I've got it on TDC and then the locking pin for the front pulley, I've lined it up roughly where it would go. Um, that, that way it's within a couple of degrees of where it would bolt to on the engine anyway, because it's critical for that. That's where the crankshaft position sensor goes. So that's all good that. So I'm going to bolt the flywheel on, do the flywheel, and then this can be polished and uh, I could drop that in the block, so I'll, uh, I'll film it going in the block. So this morning I'm just assembling this short motor for this Duratec race engine. This is out of the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup series, so there's not really a lot we could do to this. I've skimmed the block, I've honed the bores, it's all been washed, I've checked the balance on the crankshaft, the pistons, the conrods, so I'm going to gap the rings, and then assemble it. So that's the rings gapped on cylinder number four and cylinder number one. So I'm gonna fit them two now because I've got the crank at bottom dead center for that. And I'm gonna use, instead of using the normal piston ring compressor, I'm using one of these ARP tapered compressor rings. So with these, a slight bit of oil in here just to help the rings fall through. And they're nice and steady. Have the skirt just sticking just below them so it can locate in the bore nice and easy. And then keeping that pressed so it's nice and flat with the top of the block. And it's just a case of wiggling that through there. Thank you. 
So now I've just got to flip that over, put the big end caps on, torque it up, then flip it back and do cylinders number two and number three. Bottom end all torqued up. Uh, I've rebuilt the oil pump, oil strainers on. So what I'm gonna do now is fit the sump. So I'm just using sealer around the dry joint and uh, we'll bolt it up, so I'll time lapse. With this, now the sump is bolted, well it's not bolted down yet actually, and uh, now the sump's being bolted down, is um, this front plate here, it's important that that there is lined up really well because or the, or the sump, the front of the sump and the front of the block because it has a plate that bolts all the way across the front. Um, so to get that to seal nice in these corners, you want this as flush as possible. So what I do is put three, maybe four bolts in it and nip it and then spend some time just making sure it is nice and uh, in the right spot. That's the two litre drawer tech for the Mazda MX-5 all finished, the bottom end. So all my customer's got to do is just um, put the cylinder head on. Everything's all talked up, new rings, new bearings. Um, yeah, all washed, ready to go. On to the next. So first job in today is I've got two um, engines worth of ancillaries or cylinder heads, blocks, cranks. And these are for uh, the BMW Compact Cup Championship. Um, so I've got Zach at Cord Graphics to print me off the engine rules and regs and now I'm just going through all the bits to, um, so the, well the customer's building his own engine but I'm just machining it all so it's within in the regulations for him. So I've machined the head down to the minimum thickness, that was the first thing that I've done and washed it. Now I'm cutting the seats and I'm cutting the actual seat to the spec what they recommend or what they want in the buck. Um, so that's being done now and uh, I've also done the block so the block's been through the cleaner and I've honed it I'm just going to quickly reface the top and then I've got the valves and then wash all the engine components which a lot of that's been done at the moment so there's two lots of engine components that are well one set's in the wash at the moment actually the other set I've bagged up uh, and then another cylinder head, another block, two cranks, and then that's that job done. So I'll I'll keep videoing bits as and when I get them done. So this is the uh, second one of the BMW race car cylinder heads that I've had to machine. And what I thought I'd show is on the first one there was no warp to it at all. But I had to machine it down to a certain depth. So I've done that, no problem. But on this second one, I've already took a tenth hour cut off it. And as you can see, it's really badly warped in the middle. I mean, I knew it was gonna be warped because of here, I could see it was dark all around here. But that's quite a heavy cut straight away. And it's still got warp in it. So I'm gonna take a measurement from where the Championship regulators want us to take a measurement from just to make sure that I can still take enough off it. Oh, so, with the verniers, I just hold the vernier nice and flat. I've got a little bit of pressure on the thumb screw of the vernier. and then take my measurement. So I've still got half a mil to take off that, so I should be fine. I should be fine with the um, with the warpage, but this isn't a great cylinder egg compared to the other one. Oh, the other thing is, anyone doing time, a lot of timing chain stuff has a separate case in that bolts to the front. They always have to be skimmed with that timing case bolted. So you level up the bottom first down here. That's for the rocker cover gasket. That needs to be level. And then you need to skim this base as well. And 
and I can see straight away that there's still some warpage in that cylinder head. So that's head number one out of the wash now, that's all ready for the customer. So we've skimmed it down to the, the setting in the, in the rules and regulations and I've done the valve seats to the rules and regulations as well. Took the stem seals off it, machined the front cover. So I could drop that one in the box and get the second one ready. <laughs> I'm not having a lot of luck today. I've just done a 10 minute video on crankshaft balancing. Setting the machine up, setting the computer up and everything else. To realise that I hadn't switched the GoPro on. So I've then done another video showing how I do it and how well not to set it up because I've already set it up but showing the crank grinder uh, the crank balancer to realise that I've recorded it in time <laughs> got recorded so third time lucky here we go. What I'm testing is a, a BMW the BMW compact cut crankshafts like I said on the previous um, videoing of the of the the head and the the block I've got two engine components to machine and prep for the customer who's building his own engine so this is the first crank that I'm doing crank crank out of crank uh, of engine number one I've set up the balancer so it's running perfect on the crankshaft I've set up the RPM signal I've set up the data in the computer part of the balancer which is there. I've even rang this crankshaft up on, and to see that it's out of balance on both planes. This is how much it's out of balance by and this is the degrees it's out of balance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some slight adjustments to the crankshaft and then we'll see the, the data come down. But what I'm going to also do for my customer is take a before and an after reading so we can see that we've improved it. So I managed to get crank one a bit better. Uh, crank two was out on the flywheel side, which is this side, by 20, 21.67 grams, and I've got it down to 3.4 now. So this, this one's come in really well. Uh, the front wasn't out, which is nice, because I didn't have to touch that. And, uh, the um, oops, the front, yeah, the front I haven't had to touch, and then the rear I've just had to do a little bit behind here. So it's all done as per factory as well, so it's not against the rules and regulations. So happy with that one. I'm gonna polish these journals now, get them in the cleaner, and crack on with another job off it. So that there is both the BMW cranks, um, the journals have been polished. They've been balanced, which I showed earlier, and they've both been through the wash, so all the old burnt oils come off them now. Uh, I've sprayed them in oil, so I'm going to drop them in the box. They're ready to go. So on the BMW, that's the um, that cylinder head number two, which is skimmed to the right depth, and uh, had the seats cut all to spec these are all the engine bits that have been washed same again exactly the same spec on the cylinder head all the engine bits washed and in there is um, both cranks with both balancing sheets and there's one pair of cams in that box that's for engine two and there's a pair of cams in the bottom of that box for engine one there's also a conversion set and a headset for um, both engines which we've supplied first one of the two BMW compact cup engines this is now being honed refaced been through the cleaner a few times so what the customer wants me to do is check the piston ring gap and also install the piston ring to the to the pistons so the first thing that I'll check is the is the guide rails and the oil control so these I just do by eye because it's not they're not as important as long as the, the gap is about right then that'll do the 
Next thing is the second ring. So I'll get it in the bore. Then use a piston to square the ring in the bore. And then with a set of feeler gauges, measure the gap. And the other thing that I do is also feel on the feeler gauge whether it's tight at the back of the ring or at the front of the ring. So if I do need to make an adjustment, I know if I need to just tweak the ring one way or the other. And then the last one to check is the top ring. And the top ring is a couple of thou tight. Uh, and I, I want all the rings absolutely spot on. So it's only a couple of thou. And probably in a road going car it might be okay. But with this being revved quite hard all through its race. Uh, I don't want any chance of the heat making the rings expand. And the ring ends butting up. Because it could cause damage to the piston ring lands. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a couple of thou out of the end and double check it. So that's all the piston rings gapped. The next thing my customer wants me to do is to fit the, the piston rings to the pistons. Now these pistons, I've weighed them as a, as a unit because you can't actually take any weight off any part of it um, so I've weighed every piston and rod combination and they're all really close anyway but one thing that these do suffer with is in the top ring and the second ring in the groove they have a really heavy build up of carbon and and, um, and oil which um, when fitting the new rings it would affect the ring on the bore and sealing correctly so the best way to clean these out is to use the old rings. So once I take the old rings off, I just bend them out of shape and then run them around until there's absolutely no carbon build up in there. Just like that is now, I mean, it's perfect. So I'm gonna put these rings onto the piston. I'm gonna cover them in tissue and tape them up so they can't get damaged and then put them in the box ready for the customer. And one thing I do wanna say is Jordan, if you're watching, and Simon, I need a new body warmer desperately. You promised you'd clothe me forever, and I feel like you're letting me down. And there we go. It's a good job that we check, um, or I check, every ring in every bore. This just goes to show the difference. I machined a couple of thou off this top ring to get it right, but this one here needs three, maybe four thou off it. So always check and double check. So that's it, that's the rings all gapped and fitted to the pistons for engine number one. So what I'm gonna do now is just put some tissue and some tape around the rings to stop them moving on the pistons, stop them getting damaged and then put them in a box. This block's now all done and I can move on to the second block. So that's it, that's all the BM stuff now ready for collection. That's one cylinder head with all the parts, bearings and both gasket sets. That's both blocks been through the wash, both been honed. Uh, caps have been off. Both decks have been skimmed. And then there's the second cylinder head with 
all the the bits ready for it and then the box at the bottom has got all the uh well both cranks cams some paperwork that i had uh, printed off so he might as well take that with him i don't need it so i'll i'll put that box on top of there and then i'll put the big box on top of that one and then in there are two sets of pistons and rods with the rings fitted and gapped so the only thing that i've got to put in them box are the valves which i've shot blasted and refaced polish the stems up that's it it's saturday night it's i think it's about nine o'clock isn't it no eight o'clock so i'm locking up and going home thanks for viewing the channel i'll catch you on the next one please oh don't forget to subscribe if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed and hit the like button if you could leave the word bmw in the comments below that'd be great